Adirondack Outlot is a Funtime Vomitron that was installed at the Great Escape for the 2021 season. This attraction is similar to the Fabry Boosters and Gravity Works skyscrapers that have been out there for years. Except Adirondack Outlaw is a higher capacity version of those rides, which allows it to operate at Great Escape not as an upcharge attraction. With Six Flags St. Louis also getting one of these fun time models for the 2022 season in Catwoman Whip, it is possible this could be the next ride that Six Flags clones across their parks. But is that the right move? In this video, I will be reviewing Adirondack Outlaw and explaining why it might not be a smart move for Six Flags to clone this ride. Great Escape announced Adirondack Outlaw in August of 2019, but this 16-story thrill ride was immediately met with opposition. Great Escape strategically wanted to place this ride at the end of Ghost Town, so the ride would be highly visible from Route 9 to attract new customers. But their original location was a little too visible as there were concerns it would be visible down by Lake George. The original location would have been right in front of Desperado Plunge's final turn, which is where the new entrances for Steam and Demon and Adirondack Outlaw are currently. So Grayscape moved the ride over to where Steam and Demon's old entrance used to be. This location was located a little down the hill, which allowed Adirondack Outlaw to satisfy the town's height ordinance. And the ride is plenty visible too. In fact, I'd argue it looks better in this location. The old location would have run perpendicular to Route 9, while the new location runs parallel to the road, so the ride looks even more imposing at that angle. And it looks massive too, because the entrance is at the bottom of the hill, while Adirondack Outlaw is in Ghost Town atop the hill. As I mentioned earlier, this type of ride is usually an upcharge. That's because they usually seat no more than 8 riders per cycle. Thankfully, Six Flags went with a larger version of this ride that seats 16 riders. Each end of the arm seats 8 riders back to back. But is that capacity enough? It barely works at Grey Escape, but I have my reservations if it's cloned at a larger Six Flags park. 16 riders per cycle is less than optimal for a high profile ride like this, and Adirondack Outlaw is also a painstakingly slow loader. Only one arm can be loaded at a time, and it is a cumbersome process because the station platform takes a while to rise and lower. Great Escape currently does not have this ride in their Skip the Line Pass due to capacity concerns, and even when I hopped in line right before closing, I still had to wait almost an hour, and there couldn't have been more than 100 people ahead of me in line. This ride's capacity really is that poor. One thing that also slowed down the loading process was that each arm had to be balanced. When the park realized I was riding alone, they actually had to call an employee to ride with me on the other side. By balancing the ride vehicles, it does make the ride a little less wild. As for the restraints, this ride has your average over the shoulder restraints, which are fine for this type of ride because they don't inhibit the sensations and they're not bulky enough to inhibit the view. But what does inhibit the view is the policy that glasses are not allowed even with a strap. To my knowledge, this is the first ride at Grey Escape and the entire Six Flags chain that bans glasses under any circumstances. It was a bummer because it made it harder to appreciate the views, but even my 144p vision, yes, my vision is that poor, I could still tell the view was gorgeous. Every cycle sends riders both forwards and backwards. You start by going one direction for roughly one and a half minutes, and then you pause at the top while the other side loads. You then go in the opposite direction for roughly one and a half minutes as well. Most parks with this type of ride load both arms back to back before cycling the ride in full. I think I prefer that approach because you get three straight minutes of insanity, but the key is that you get a nice long cycle even if it is broken up. Adirondack Outlaw takes a little bit to get going, but eventually you hit the ride's top speed of 52 miles per hour or 84 kilometers per hour. Now this isn't quite as fast as other rides like it, but it does feel plenty fast on ride, especially because the cars sort of wobble on the downswings. Where the lack of speed impacts the ride experience is in the intensity department. This model is not as wild as the Fabry, Gravity Works, or Zamperla models I have ridden elsewhere. It doesn't have the insane positive G's in the downswing that feel like they'll rip your legs off. 
the positive G's are merely decent. But I think that's probably a wise move given the family friendly clientele that Grey Escape tends to attract. This is not the usual Six Flags crowd. Where this attraction shines is at the apex. Once the ride hits its top speed, you consistently get one flip over the top with each rotation. The flip is smooth and gradual. It doesn't really have a violent whip to it like some of the other skyscrapers out there. Instead, it feels graceful and offers a tiny pinch of hang time. But at those heights and speeds, even a gradual flip is still fairly thrilling and a ton of fun. And each of these flips is paired with a stunning view of the park and Adirondack Mountains. It's one of the best views from any ride. Great Escape really is located in a beautiful region, and this is one of the best rides to admire that view. So what would I rate Adirondack Outlaw? I would give this flat ride an 8 out of 10. I'm a big fan of booster rides, and this one does a lot of things well. This one is not an upcharge, has a much longer cycle than usual, and offers stunning views. I do wish this one was a little more intense, both in the positive G and flipping department, but it's still a very wild ride that instantly becomes the park's best flat ride, and second best attraction overall after the Comet. While this ride experience would be welcome at other Six Flags parks, I do have my concerns about the low throughput being a major issue at the larger Six Flags parks. Great Escape is one of the smallest Six Flags parks, and this ride generated lengthy queue lines there. So imagine if this ride was at a bigger park and was not an upcharge. It could be catastrophic. So those are my thoughts on Adirondack Outlaw. What are your thoughts on this Funtime Vomitron? Or any of the other boosters out there? I would love to hear your thoughts about this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.